Okay, hi everybody. So our next topic today uh, is going to be a new one, and it's encryption. So this is a very pertinent um, topic. It's, it's actually a very important one and for a variety of reasons, which I won't get into in this video, the political reasons behind it. But there's, there's many different reasons why encryption is important. Um, however, our purpose is going to be to understand at least one area of encryption. Okay, so we'll talk. We'll discuss more about that uh, in a few minutes. Um, but essentially, encryption allows. The, the concept of privacy. Okay, so that's that's the that's the underpinning of the, the of the whole purpose behind it, um, and of course it's used in everyday life, from any everything from online banking, um, to online purchases, um, and not just for you know mo monetary transactions, but it's used in a variety of uh, different areas in the world. Inclusive, let's say even, for example, web pages that are HTTPS, um, encrypted web pages. Um, there's so many different areas that I could spend a whole video discussing all the areas, all the things that use encryption. So uh, I thought that we could perhaps learn how to use encryption in Python. Uh, Python is a very easy, high-level language to learn encryption in, so it becomes really um, doable. It's not difficult. But what's more important is the understanding of the concepts. So for that, I've decided before we start coding, we should start um, taking a look at the the concepts behind encryption. So essentially, what's the simplest way to describe this problem? Well, you have one person here, and you have another person over here. And the most classic, and you know, we have to do this, uh, we're going to call these people Alice and Bob, because that's it's you know it's a crime not to use those names in encryption every single example of encryption in the world uses Alice and Bob I don't know why but they do maybe because it's A and B but in any case um, what's the purpose of it well the purpose of it is so that Alice can have a document or a message a file, uh, something, and send it to Bob. And of course, um, there's a person in the middle who's kind of evil, and we'll call her Eve. And this is also, again, the most classic name for this person in the middle. And she can see anything that is transported between them so so she's she can snoop and get a copy of whatever Alice sends to Bob or vice versa so how do you achieve secrecy between Alice and Bob or privacy that's a good question okay so let's assume that Alice has a mechanism for locking. Okay, so there's a keyhole, and of course, uh, we can have a key, right? That 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 she would be able to to lock and unlock. Uh, and let's say that the message was inside here, okay? So let's assume that this key 
is, is a password. It doesn't have to be a password. It could, I mean, a password might be something that you type in, but it can also be generated too. But we'll just call it a password for now. And let's say this thing here, this box with the keyhole on it, let's say that's the file. So once you encrypt this file with this password, then you can send this locked device, this locked file, uh, to Bob. And if Eve snoops and picks it up, well, then she needs the password in order to decrypt it. The problem arises when Bob on the other end, wants to decrypt the file, open it up, open the lock. What does he, he obviously needs the password too. So now we come to the problem of how does Alice get the password to Bob? Well, she could send it to him, but that's not going to work because as soon as she sends the key, over well then it's picked up by Eve again and now she can unlock what she previously uh, made a copy of which was the document so this has some inherent this has basically a really big problem and and um, this existed for a long time so the solution to this was actually uh, kind of invented or discovered by a couple of uh, computer scientists called uh, Diffie and Hellman. And um, I can show you the uh, Wikipedia page for Diffie Hellman. Hold on a sec. Okay, so here's the Wikipedia page for Diffie Hellman key exchange. Now what this is actually doing is it's actually using a key pair or a public private key pair. And the way this works is that Alice on the one hand creates a, a key pair. So she makes a public and a private key and so does Bob. Bob also makes a public and private key. Now, with the public part of your key, these two keys are these two keys are related in such a way that mathematically, and they and they actually use a concept of uh, prime numbers and f and how difficult it is to factor numbers. Now, we're not going to go into the math of it. However, I will have a uh, video uh, describing the mathematics behind it. However, for now, I'll, the video for, for that I'll put in the, uh, in the notes of, of this video and, um, and I'll, I'll have links to it. But for now, all I would like to explain is that the public and private keys are related in such a way that if you encrypt something with a public key, you can decrypt it with the private key. And, and so therefore, once you encrypt something with a public key, the only way to get it back is with the private key. So think of the public key as the lock and think of the private key as the unlock okay so think of these two as like keys and one of the it's like it's like having a lock right but instead of the lock only having one keyhole imagine that it has two keyholes this one is used to lock it that's the that's the public side and this one is used to unlock it and they're different keys 
But they are related. Mathematically, they are related. Okay? And this is the private side. Now, what this means is that if anyone, let's say Alice in this case, wants to send a message to Bob, she can't just do so willy-nilly. She needs something first. And she needs Bob's public key. So she has to perhaps even, somehow she has to get her hands on Bob's public key if she wants to send him a message. And vice versa, if Bob wants to send Alice a message, he has to get his hands on her public key so that they can do the encryption. Now, recognize something that if, so let's, let's write Bob and Alice here again. Okay, so the modern uh, method to create these public-private keys is called RSA. So you can see here on Wikipedia, RSA was invented by these three computer scientists, Rivas, Chamir, and Adelman and way back in 1977. Um, now, relatively speaking, that's not that long ago. Um, so notice here it says the security of the RSA relies on the practical difficulty of factoring the product of two large prime numbers. The factoring problem, breaking RSA encryption, is known as the RSA pr uh, problem. Whether it's whether it is as difficult as the factoring problem is an open question. There are no published methods to defeat the system if a large enough key is used. By the way, here are some downfalls of RSA. It's slow. Okay. Um, the other uh, kind of problem is that you're limited to the amount of information which you can encrypt. So we should actually uh, define the terms here of what type of encryption this is. So this is called this is called asymmetric encryption. Now, if we go back to the original problem that we had, if we kind of pull this down and we come way up here and we discussed about taking, uh, you know, encrypting a single, f uh, you know, something with a single key and sending it off to another person, this is actually referred to as symmetric encryption where it doesn't use a key pair, you just use one key, you use the same key to encrypt and decrypt, okay? So the same key is used to lock or to lock and unlock. Now, um, this has some benefits. Let's make, a, let's make a, um, a pro and con table here. Okay, between the two. And by the way, the name for this encryption, uh, this one was actually, uh, it's called AES, and it stands for Advanced Encryption Standard. But the Advanced Encryption Standard is Rindal. And that was actually selected uh, as the, the best one. And it had to meet some criteria, and, and we'll discuss that. Uh, in a few in a few moments so really we're discussing two types of encryption here okay so let's kind of make a table here okay so I've made a table here and we've got RSA on the left and AES on the right um, so a con of RSA is that it's slow a con of RSA is uh, limited to uh, approximately, it's like less than 200 and 
55 uh, bytes, but because of some other factors, limitations, I think you're about limited to around 245 bytes. Now that's not a lot. Now for a small message, uh, that's, that's okay, right? 245 bytes, basically consider it to be uh, each byte is one letter. You could consider it to be so a message of 245 characters. Well, you could send a small message, but what about encrypting a file? That's not going to work. Or, or an image, that's not going to work. Okay, uh, so AES, pros, it's fast. Uh, pro, unlimited data. Okay, con. Now the con is a big one here, and the con is that um, it's the fact that it's symmetric encryption, which means that there's only one key. Okay, so so one key only. So somehow you have to be you have to be able to get this one key to the person you want to decrypt the file. Okay? On the other hand, the, the advantage of RSA is that it's asymmetric. So you can use two keys, one to encrypt and one to decrypt. Now that's a real big advantage, but it has these other disadvantages. So therefore, what the entire world does, essentially, is they combine RSA and AES together. So how does this work? Well, let's take a look at this concept. So again, we've got this situation where we want Alice to send a message to Bob. So she has this file. So what she does is she generates her private and public keys using RSA. And Bob does the same. So the next thing Alice does is she creates a, uh, an AES key, which is, you can consider it a password, but basically a key in this case will be uh, randomly generated. Okay, it can, be, it can be randomly generated. And now that she has her AES key, she uses that to uh, encrypt the file. So she takes the file and she encrypts it with, with AES. And so now, of course, you need the key, the AES key, to unlock it. But she doesn't send the key just like that. What she does now, and this is the heart of the, of the solution, is she uses RSA encryption not to encrypt the document or the file, no. She uses that to encrypt the AES key itself. So just the key is being encrypted. Now the other, the other cool thing about this thing is that the AES key is short. Okay, it's very small. I mean, um, AES keys can be anywhere from these AES keys can be anywhere from 16, I think there's only three possibilities, uh, but this 16 bytes, that's a 128-bit AES encryption, and then you've also got 32-byte, uh, which is 256-bit um, encryption, okay? Um, this one is used by default, and this is an incredible amount of 
uh, encryption already. Uh, I've heard statements that it would take the fastest computers on the planet something like, you know, thousands of years or, I don't know, a, a ridiculously long amount of time that's, uh, there's no point in even trying to decrypt it. Um, so, essentially now, remember, we were limited with RSA to, I think it was like around 245 bytes. So, this is definitely good enough to encrypt uh, 16 bytes or 128 bits, okay? And definitely good enough for, for the maximum size uh, key as well, which would be 32 bytes. Now, the cool thing about this now is that once the AES key is encrypted, so we'll call this the encrypted AES key, and that has to be encrypted with Bob's public key, okay? So this is not a document, this is a key. So maybe I shouldn't write it like that. Maybe I should write it more like, um, maybe we should kind of make it an encrypted key. So we'll call it like this and we'll go squiggly. I'm trying to make a key look encrypted. But now what we do is we send this encrypted document to Bob. And if anybody intercepts it in the middle, that's okay, it's encrypted and we're not sending the, the key. Then we'll also, we could send it with it, but then we could also send the encrypted key to Bob. And that's been encrypted with Bob's public key using RSA. So now when Bob opens this package, he ends up getting this encrypted file and he ends up getting this encrypted key. So two things. This, is, this has been encrypted with AES and this has been encrypted with RSA. So the first thing Bob does is he decrypts the key using his private key into the into the regular looking key that will open up this AES lock then he uses that key plugs that key into the AES problem and voila changes that into the unencrypted document and that's how it works that's the whole process. You see, now somebody in the middle, they, 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 they're not gonna really have any use for the encrypted uh, AES document because they don't have the, uh, the symmetric key. And they can't get the key unless they can decrypt the RSA encrypted uh, AES key. So this key is the AES key, but it's been encrypted with RSA. Okay? So essentially, it, the problem boils down to, can you decrypt RSA? Well, no. So therefore, you can't ever get the key to decrypt the AES, which is what, which is what the document is. And this is, how, this is how standard encryption today works. So RSA and AES, or asymmetric and symmetric encryption, work hand in hand together to provide the mechanism to be able to use encryption for privacy. One other thing I will mention uh, as a side note is that modern CPUs within the last few years have AES acceleration built into the hardware. 
So they're even faster at doing symmetric encryption. So to end off this video, I'm going to have some links to uh, other videos that I'd like you to, to uh, take a look at as they explain the Diffie-Hellman uh, solution and uh, some other, th well, specifically also how AES uh, does its uh, encryption.